<coughs> Good morning. I'm going to talk about, uh, okay, I guess some people call it black body radiation, some people call it Planck's radiation law. I talk, talk about the quantum theory with a continuous spectrum. Now we had a discrete spectra, the atomic spectra of the hydrogen atom. Uh, the the um, very lowest order corrections, I think this is squared, is given by this formula, and I derived it with this fine structure constant in it. But for a discrete case, this is valid. When we go to a continuous case, an example of continuous spectrum of radiation would be, for example, black body radiation, whatever that is. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how Kirchhoff began looking at this cavity radiator. Now, I'm just going to go over some of the history of it right now. I'm also going to talk about what we mean by Oh, there are lots of different terms for, and there's lots of different notation for this stuff, so it becomes very confusing for a student. I'll talk about what we mean by the continuous spectrum in a minute, and intensity, and so on and so forth. So, one good person to start off with could be Gustav Kirchhoff, who came up with a rule due to equilibrium. He also defined the idea of a black body. I'm going to tell you what that means in a minute, not just yet. Um, and along came Wilhelm Wein, Wein, I don't know how you pronounce it, it's German, and he came up with two things. Wein's displacement law, which is the derivative set to zero of Wein's approximation. So there are two things with Wein, some people think there's only one. It begins with Wein's approximation, and then you take its derivative and find the, you know, the peak of the curve by setting that equal to zero. Rayleigh genes. Rayleigh is not Rayleigh at all, his name is John Strutt. He's called Baron Rayleigh. 19, okay, these guys live. John Tyndall is a very important person. I should have mentioned him. He, Irish, Anglo-Irish. A lot of the great uh, early physicists were actually Anglo-Irish. Not quite Irish, not quite English, Anglo-Irish. John Tyndall is one. Robert Boyle is another. William Ron, William Ron Ham, Hamilton is another. Sir George Stokes is another. Well, anyway, George Stokes' student was John Strutt, Baron Rayleigh, 1842 to 1919. John Tyndall died in 1906, born in 1844. These are all contemporaries. Wilhelm Wein, 1864 to 1828. And Baron Rayleigh, 1842 to 1919. Now, James Jeans made a correction to what became the Rayleigh Jeans Law. James Jeans, 1877 to... 1946, so it's known as the Rayleigh Jeans Law. The Rayleigh Jeans Law gives rise to a catastrophe. Ehrenfest, Paul Ehrenfest, first came up with this notion of the catastrophe in his latest 1916 or something like that. Ehrenfest committed suicide actually, he was a very good friend of Einstein's. He, Einstein thought he'd wasted too much time working on radios. Anyway, never mind about that, he was a nice guy. Now. Stefan Boltzmann's law, I'm going to talk about this as an example to begin radiation for you guys today. But Ludwig Boltzmann, 1844 to 1906, another suicide, the poor guy. Anyway, he has, on his headstone, he has his statistical physics law. <clears throat> Joseph Stefan made an alteration, 1835 to 1893. And the whole thing, actually, I could eliminate all of this stuff and just talk about Planck's radiation law because all the other things can be derived from that. All these contributions were part of the struggle leading up to Planck's radiation law, which gives the spectrum of a black body in terms of temperature, R, and frequency, period, and so on and so forth, or energy. Max Planck, 1858 to 1947, <coughs> he had two papers published on this same stuff. One was published in 1900, it's in a German, um, a German journal, and I can't, I couldn't pronounce the words, so I didn't put them on the board. But I can pronounce Analindar physics. Analindar physics. I've got stories about that one. Um, I was down in Princeton one time on a fellowship, at Princeton University, and in Fine Hall Library, they actually had all the Analindar physics books on the shelf. They weren't behind the counter, and one of them was Analindar physics, 1905. And in that, Einstein has published back to back. Um, special theory of relativity and also the photoelectric effect, which is a continuation of all of this stuff, by the way. 
the Einstein's photoelectric effect, talks about photons for the first time. He doesn't, I don't know if he uses the word photons, but it realized that there are things called light quanta. Planck's radiation doesn't recognize light quanta. It recognizes energy quanta. <clears throat> anyway, one way or another, these two papers are published in Adelinder Physics, which was very narrow, and on the shelves in the Princeton Physics Library. And in the hallway of the library, there's a big portrait of Richard Feynman. It's called Fein Hall Library, I think. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. So I, I used to do a lot of my calculations down in a little bar downstairs on Nassau Street, I think, called um, the Annex. Yeah, nice little bar, and I would calculate over the counter. And one day I was, I'd been in Fein Hall Library, and of course, you think I'm going to go and not take Anlinder Physics from 1905 off the shelf and look at it? It's in German, but you know, for the history, I like to have a look at it. I was down in the annex by accident when I took out my papers. Anlinder Physics fell out on the shelf by accident. And I thought, gee, what, what's that doing in my bag? It must have got mixed up in my papers. So I finished up my beer and dashed back and got it back on the shelves because I was so nervous having taken this out of the library by accident. All right. Anyway, it went back on the shelf exactly where I found it. But that is a collector's item. In fact, if you wanted to buy an Anlander Physics 1905 volume, I would say three hundred, five hundred thousand uh, dollars is what you'd expect to pay for it. So I'm going to start talking about this business of the continuous spectrum. Coming from what? A black body. But I'm going to begin by talking about radiation because, you know, students get bogged down with the symbolism, symbols, whether it's going to be I or a B, for uh, intensity, is it going to be intensity or is it going to be called something else? I forget what it's called. Um, let me just check. Yeah, I don't call it, I call it everything with different names in here. I'm going to begin talking about the radiation and what we mean by it. And I'm going to talk about what's mean by solid angle and how, what, how does the frequency and um, wavelength dependence crop into this. So let me erase all of this. Have I gone all through these things? Well, oh, something very interesting is that students of Kirchhoff were Mendeleev and Max Planck himself. Now, there are, somebody else had some very interesting students, and I can't remember. Um, which one it was. Could have been Boltzmann. But there are some famous students in here. I have to... Oh gosh, I should have looked them up. Let's check. Oh yeah, here is... Um, Lord Rayleigh was... His advisor was Sir George Stokes. Another Anglo-Irish guy. How about that? And students of... Um, John Strutt, that's uh, Baron Rayleigh, were actually J.J. Thompson and Yagdish Bowles. And J.J. Thompson had a student, he was Max Born. Max Born had a student, he was Robert Oppenheimer. And M Robert Oppenheimer had a, a few good students as well. And, you know, I traced this heritage for you guys before, and I forget, it's one of those lectures. You go look it up, it's interesting. So let me get rid of all of this. and do some physics. we mean by intensity? Well, you guys have already looked at something in your elementary physics, and you've talked about Stefan Boltzmann's law.
now when you go into a blacksmith's forge, I used to work in them when I was a kid, everything is, you know, when they heat up the metal, iron, when they want to shape it, they have to heat it up and it starts changing colour. It becomes visible to the human. It becomes red. But once iron is even at room temperature, it's also radiating, just that we can't see it. But a snake could, right? An infrared detector could pick it up. Once you go over zero Kelvin, you start radiating. All substances start radiating in a low uh, frequency range before you get to red. When they start hitting the red, then humans can start seeing them. So when iron is really hot, it becomes red, and then it goes through a, a range of different colours. And this topic is all about all the different colours that things go through when they get heated up. Really, that's what it's all about. Now, all the quantities in... This is Stefan Boltzmann's law. Power, radiated from any object is given by E sigma t to the fourth A. A is the area. A special case would be what we consider when we consider something radiating and the radiation is going out spherically symmetric. So therefore then the area is going to be 4 pi r squared for r is the area of the sphere if you're sitting at that particular little point. Okay, the inverse square law. I'll go back to my inverse square law when I did gravity and Coulomb's law I did it. Now this sigma can be derived and I will derive it but it has a value, and I can't remember what it is. Yeah. Five point six seven by ten to the power minus eight watts per square meter Kelvin to the fourth, and E. This is called the emissivity. <coughs> A perfect emitter will be a black body. One, would, one like that would be the sun. And when that is the case, E equals 1. That's just a number from 0 to 1. Somebody that doesn't emit radiation at all, E was 0. And some... Okay, there's a thing called an albedo. The Earth's albedo is 30%. That means 30% of the radiation that hits it, you know, goes back into outer space. So the Earth doesn't have E equals 1. The Earth has E equal, you know, 0.66 or something, right? So that the other 30% gets reflected due to all the water on the Earth's surface into space. So we're not a perfect emitter or absorber. Black body E equals 1. It absorbs all the radiation that hits it. We'll talk about that later. Kelvin, 0, minus 273 degrees approximately. We always work in the Kelvin scale. So once you go over minus 273 degrees centigrade, then you start radiating. At K equals 0, no radiation. The universe has a background black body radiation of approximately 3 degrees Kelvin, left over from the Big Bang. That's another story I'll talk about. Okay, so what do we mean by all these things? Well, we said equals power is going to be watts. And watts are joules per second, right? Now, in the case of an inverse square law, where we have an area of 4 pi r squared, this power uh, per unit area we'll call the intensity. Okay, the intensity i. When we look at the black body radiation, this intensity could vary with wavelength and frequency. We'll talk about that in a minute. But right now, this is what we're looking at. A power over 4 pi r squared, and that's going to be sigma t to the fourth, Stefan Boltzmann's law, and I actually derive this at some point, I will. But right now, before you can derive it, it was found experimentally um, by Stefan and Boltzmann, okay? But I want to look at this part here and its units. So we we'll take a spherical object enclosed in a sphere of radius r. Here's the little object in here, and it's radiating out in all directions. Now you could stop a certain amount of it by putting a little disc here, or you could let some radiation out, let's say, by putting a hole in it. 
and letting some radiation out. And the rest is stopped. So this little area here, okay, is going to be a fraction of a big sphere. And as the, if the sphere was allowed to grow, the intensity would fall off in proportional to the surface area of that sphere where r is its radius. But we look at this i, If I had a hemisphere, in other words, half a sphere stopping the radiation, I would get half the number of joules per second going through. Half that. If I had a quarter of a sphere, a quarter of a sphere, I would get just pi as being the angle in there. What's this 4 pi doing? It's giving me a way to measure solid angle. This is a solid angle. It's a cone. It's the tip of a cone, kind of, but it's curved, right? So this here, I'm going to write more gently as power equals theta r squared. This is called an angle, solid angle, called measured in steradians. <coughs> So this is what we're going to be talking about all the time, and this is where teachers don't bother going into the details. So if we make this a measure of solid angle, a full sphere is 4 pi r squared. And a sphere over 4 is yet smaller. And where have you seen this before? Now this is actually an area, so we can have a section of a sphere any size we want, okay? So long as we know how to measure this theta in star radians. So therefore then theta is an angle, it's actually dimensionless, it's a ratio. So we have meters for area squared, meters squared, over length squared, meters squared, that's the steradian, okay? And it varies from zero to four pi. Four pi is a full sphere, two pi is a half sphere, as I mentioned there. Now where did we get that before? when defined in radians, when theta could be 0 to 2 pi. So for a circle, just the circumference of a circle, theta varies from 0 to 2 pi, and we have radians. So theta is distance over uh, distance, meters over meters, for this linear case, but for the solid angle case, it's going to be area over area. Get your head around solid angle, because it's going to be part of it. <clears throat> so
So power over area is going to be watts per square meter, which is called intensity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at when we've studied what a black body is, I'm not going to do it today, but very roughly speaking, if we have all the random radiations inside in a cavity uh, at you know a constant temperature in there, the stuff that's radiated is going to approximate black body radiation uh, as defined by Kirchhoff. I'm going to do that in the next lecture, but just today I want to talk about what does this radiation mean. Well, the color of this is going to change depending on the temperature, right? There's going to be a color dependence. The intensity is going to change, and we're going to have a formula for intensity as it varies with frequency or wavelength or omega, or energy. All of these things are related, okay? Let's see how they're related. <clears throat> now, frequency is sometimes written in high school text as F, but in big boy text is written as nu. first equation that helps these two to talk to each other. And eventually we're going to get to this relationship, the Planck condition, but not yet. It doesn't come till much later, okay? But omega, angular frequency is 2 pi f, because omega is 2 pi over the period and the period is reciprocal of frequency. But uh, C equals F times lambda is true for all waves, <coughs> frequency times wavelength. So it allows us to define anything, any function of something, in terms of nu or lambda, omega or e. So, what kind of a thing is it? Well, it's going to be some kind of function in here. We don't know yet, but it's continuous. So we'll talk about a continuous spectrum, depends on the frequency, as the frequency changes, it's going to have a peak for some particular temperature. For some other temperature, it'll have another peak. But to find the shape of this function, that's what Planck set out to do because the Rayleigh genes won, based on classical physics. They didn't make a mistake. They used what was known about electric, uh, electromagnetic radiation, plugged it in, and got a wrong result. They got a result that went to infinity, and we knew that there was no such thing as an infinity an infinite amount of energy coming out of this box, right? So it must have been wrong. And Ehrenfest called this a catastrophe. I don't know if that's a good term or not, but sometimes strange terms crop into physics. One term that I hate that cropped into physics was due to um, John Wheeler calling dark stars black holes. I didn't like that at all. Uh, he, he called a lot of things bad. Oh gosh, what other bad terminology did he have? Getting it's from bits. Another dumb phrase. Sorry, John, the Lord of mercy on you and all, but you made up some really bad terms. Okay. Um, Gelman's term for uh, quark, is, it's, it's, it's a, an unusual term, but I don't have a problem with it. It comes from Finnegan's Wake. Three quarks for Mr. Mark. Um, he's buying beer, I think. Quartz, I don't know. So, yeah. There's a lot of terms you can get out of James... Joyce Ulysses. For example, gauge theories is in there, as this woman was gauging the symmetry of her peeled pears. I don't know what she was doing. It doesn't matter anyway. We're going to get into this, but I wanted you girls, you guys, to get into the... Uh, I said girls because I, I taught women for a long time. Uh, the idea of the solid angle is something I want to get into your head, because it's going to crop up... Because this I is going to be watts per square meter, right? but also per frequency, or it could be per wavelength. So the units is going to be cycles per second, or hertz. It would be different if, they were, if the units were in uh, wavelengths, because this is the frequency I looked at first, and we're gonna write down an equation for it. Well, actually, Frank Planck wrote it down.
That's Planck's radiation law in terms of frequency. But you can write it in about f four different ways. It's coming up, but it doesn't come till the end. And I will derive it. But then there are two things we can get from this. Its derivative will give us one thing, and its integral will give us another. Actually, the derivative will give us uh, Wine's law, Wine's approximation. And set that approximation to zero, and we will get Wine's displacement law. The integral of the Planck radiation law over all the frequencies will give us sigma t to the fourth, Stefan Boltzmann's law. We can derive the sigma from doing that. Okay, that's all coming up. And so there's plenty of surprises. There's a lot of stuff in this, you see. You have to be careful. You want to get your head around it. And actually do some problems that makes you think about what you're doing with these random equations. Okay, coming up.